Oliver McCall certainly wasn't in the class of boxing greats such as Muhammad Ali or Mike Tyson, but he definitely made a name for himself in the ring, and while his boxing skills were always newsworthy, he will perhaps be remembered mostly for his mega meltdown during his fight against Lennox Lewis. Keep watching this video to find out all there is to know about McCall and his now infamous in-ring meltdown. What you need to know. Heavyweight boxer Oliver McCall knocked out Lennox Lewis in the second round of their fight in 1994 to win the WBC heavyweight title. When they clashed once more nearly three years later, everyone in the arena was taken aback by McCall's performance. After five rounds, the bout was stopped because McCall had a mental collapse, which is widely considered to be one of the most strange occurrences in the history of boxing. Oliver McCall's Boxing Career Oliver McCall was a talented high school basketball player, but after winning a pair of titles at the Chicago Golden Gloves, he made the decision to pursue a career in boxing instead. And in 1985, McCall, who is also known as the Atomic Bull, made his debut in the sport by knocking out Lou Bailey in the first round of their fight. During the beginning stages of his professional career, Joe Frazier, who is a boxing legend, was providing McCall with training at the time, and he taught the young boxer how to throw some really hard punches. This was evident in McCall's first fight against Lennox Lewis, which took place on September 24, 1994. He entered the fight with a record of 24-5 and as a pro, and after a close and competitive first round, the more aggressive McCall came out swinging in the second round and put Lewis out with some devastating blows. Lewis collapsed like a felled tree, and while trying to get up, the referee immediately stopped the fight. This victory meant McCall had successfully defended his WBC heavyweight title. After that, on April 8, 1995, McCall fought the former champion Larry Holmes and successfully defended his title after 12 rounds of a hard-fought contest. But later that year, he would lose the title to Frank Bruno, who won via a unanimous decision, also after 12 rounds of competition. McCall competed professionally 74 times and was victorious in 58 of those bouts. He knocked out his opponents in 37 of his victories, and he earned a reputation for being one of the hardest hitters of his era. So what happened exactly in McCall's rematch against Lennox Lewis? In a rematch for the vacant WBC heavyweight title, Oliver McCall and Lennox Lewis squared off against each other on February 7, 1997. The first two rounds of the battle were quite even, although Lennox seemed to be holding a marginal advantage. Then came the third round, and at this point, McCall was almost zapped for energy. He was neither throwing punches nor defending himself when they were thrown at him. To make matters more worrisome, McCall would not go back to his corner in between rounds of the fight. Instead, he acted as though he was lost and roamed aimlessly around the ring. In the middle of the fourth round, the referee Nils Lane called a timeout to check on McCall and see if he was okay before allowing the fight to continue. And in the fourth round, McCall was seen crying in the corner. Mills put an end to the bout in the fifth round after McCall's colossal and unexplainable meltdown. And that meant that Lennox Lewis had won the WBC heavyweight title. Following the match, McCall offered an explanation that was equally as bizarre as his behavior in the fight itself. In an interview with the New York Times, McCall explained that his method was a kind of rope-a-dope, which was totally absurd. Rope-a-dope refers to a strategy that Muhammad Ali had employed in the past against George Foreman, in which Ali had leaned on the ropes and forced Foreman to exhaust himself by continuously throwing blows. Although anyone who watched the fight knows that he never employed the rope-a-dope strategy, because unlike Ali, McCall wasn't even defending Lewis's blows from the third round up. McCall takes a trip to the hospital. In the short moments that followed the bout, a clinical psychiatrist practicing in Beverly Hills named Mark Schatz maintained that Oliver McCall had experienced a mental collapse. He said, and I quote, McCall suffered a breakdown of his nerves. In the world of drugs that we live in today, we always point first and foremost to drugs as the cause. It could be anxiety or tension, but there are also many more potential causes. It was a mental and emotional collapse. Dr. Schatz further went on to say, I have personal experience with each of the symptoms. He went in a complete circuit off the arena. He paid no attention to his nook. His eyes appeared to be glazed over, as though he were in a dissociative state, as though he were not there at all, detached. He seemed to be in a state of disassociation. Everything points to a mental collapse. Someone who was obviously struggling mentally was portrayed here. Interestingly, Schatz was proven to be correct two months after the fight, when Oliver McCall was admitted to a mental health facility as a result of many more strange behaviors. According to The Independent, McCall's wife had filed an emergency custody order against him in an attempt to reclaim custody of their children. According to the court documents, McCall presents an imminent danger to himself or others as a result of mental illness or is so seriously mentally ill as to be substantially unable to care for himself. Is McCall still boxing? McCall was quoted in a 2019 article published by BBC Sport as saying that he has what it takes to become the oldest champion in the history of the sport. He is currently in his 50s and is still competing as a boxer, although certainly not at the level he used to. He said, and I quote, Considering the difficulties and challenges that I have faced and been able to conquer, I want to be able to finish the sport better than
than when I started. And while his aspirations to make more history are commendable, becoming a world heavyweight champion in 2022 and beyond could mean beating the likes of Anthony Joshua, Andy Ruiz, Tyson Fury, and Deontay Wilder. Good luck with that. His legal troubles. The once great career of Oliver McCall has been marred by numerous stays in drug rehabilitation institutions, as well as arrests for disorderly conduct. It is impossible to count the number of times he has tried to make a comeback, but each time he has been cut short by legal troubles. After trying to run away from officers who were attempting to arrest him for trespassing in a public housing development in Nashville, Tennessee, in January 2006, he was taken into custody by police who said they had no choice but to use a taser on him. In another incident, McCall was arrested by the police for being in possession of a glass pipe and a $5 bill that contained a trace amount of cocaine. The report also stated that later, the then 40-year-old McCall spat at an officer and threatened to kill him. He was then charged with criminal trespass, resisting arrest, assaulting police officers, threatening to kill an officer, and being a fugitive from justice. His bond was set at $299,000 at the time, and he was held in custody, and on May 8, 2006, he was released after the bond had been paid. McCall was also arrested for possession of cocaine the weekend before his fight with Zuri Lawrence at the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino in Hollywood. As a result, he was unable to compete in the fight, which was scheduled to take place the following week. Another chance at boxing glory. McCall was successful in landing another major bout, which was scheduled to take place on December 7, 2010, and it was against Fres Oquendo. And to everyone's greatest surprise, McCall defeated Oquendo, who was heavily favored to win the match. However, just two days after his victory, he was once again arrested in Fort Lauderdale for possession of cannabis and violation of the municipal ordinance. Thanks to this, he was found in violation of the terms of his probation, which stemmed from the cocaine charge he faced in February. And as a consequence of the violation of his probation, he was looking at a potential sentence of six years in a Florida state prison. McCall was represented by the law office of Roger P. Foley, which was successful in having him reinstated on his previous probationary term. However, the terms of his reinstatement were modified to include drug and psychological evaluations, followed by any treatment that may be required. On December 16, 2011, he was no longer subject to the terms of his probation. McCall's net worth Oliver McCall's financial situation has remained a mystery among boxing fans all over the world. He isn't known for driving fast cars or wearing expensive jewelry, so it's quite hard to say for sure what his net worth is. However, it has been estimated that he is worth somewhere between $500,000 to $1,500,000. Not so bad, considering all his legal troubles. So guys, what do you think about Oliver McCall's mental breakdown in the ring? Kindly tell us all about it in the comment section. And if you enjoyed watching this video, please give it a like and share. Last but not least, make sure you subscribe to our channel and tap the notification bell to keep getting more interesting content like this. Thanks for watching.